Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Gary Peterson and today we're going to be going over the HT70 Plus ventilator. Now, uh, first let's uh, review the tubing really quick. We have the tubing that works for both of our ventilators and if you look at the other video, um, that's going to go over actually the setup of the actual tubing itself. So the setup is going to be identical. Um, I've got one here that's in the package. I've got one right here that's out of the package hooked to my artificial lung. And in that video we already went over how we hook up to the uh, proximal line and to the um, exhalation port. One particular issue that is to take note is both the one set of tubing will fit both ventilators. Um, in this case, however, if you notice, the, the ports inside this package, I'll bring it a little closer for you. So the ports inside this package that fit to the ventilator, okay, your prox line and your exhalation valve, You'll notice this one has an, a, a wider piece right here, a wider diameter. That's because on the Eagle vent, the, uh, the nipple is bigger, so it needs this extra piece. What we're going to do to hook it up to our HT70 Plus is we're going to take a trauma shears out, and we're simply going to cut it off right here um, so that we just have the white section. And if you look at this tubing, I've already went ahead and done that. And that way we get a nice tight seal on both. This one has been trimmed off so that it's the exact same diameter as this one, so now they're matching. We just need to make sure that we put them on the correct port. That's easy enough. We follow the tubing back, and our blue tubing is proximal to our patient, so therefore it's the prox line, and our exhalation valve is actually um, hooked, our exhalation line is actually hooked to our exhalation valve, and they're color-coded to allow us to not mistake the difference. Uh, when we come actually to the ventilator, the hookup is pretty simple. So we can just unzip this uh, section right here and expose our ports. And we just have the three. So we seat that on real nice. So that's our output. Uh, we've got our prox line, which is blue. And it actually says prox line next to the nipple. Just squeeze that on. And then we've got our exhalation valve, which is white. And that's our trim down one. And there we go, we're hooked up. Now, this actually has a window. I mean, the case can come off, but the window is actually designed to uh, roll down real tight. And then it's got a Velcro tab on the outside and the inside in order to keep the window open. Very good. You have the on-off switch is in the back of the unit. I'll show that to you. It's kind of impossible to miss, but uh, it's a black rocker switch that has a little raised section to protect it from accidentally getting rocked, but it has a triple uh, protection mechanism so that if you're ventilating a pet patient, it's almost impossible to accidentally turn the device on and therefore have the patient without ventilation. Um, first off, the on-off switch is in this recessed section um, in the back of the ventilator, so it's going to be right here. Um, and you've got a big shelf piece right here that holds the battery. So it's going to be very hard for something to accidentally touch that. It's got the raised lines on both sides in order to prevent the rocker switch from accidentally getting um, hit. If you were to turn the device on, if you were to have the device on and ventilating, and you, you were to actually um, hit that rocker switch accidentally, which there's really nothing else back there, so there's no reason to be fooling around back there and trying to find anything. But if you were, then immediately on the screen, it's going to ask you, turn the ventilator off. If so, press accept. So then you, nothing, it's still going to continue ventilating until you press accept. And then even after you press accept and it powers down, it's going to have a continuous alarm, a straight beep, which we'll go over in a minute, um, until you finally acknowledge the alarm. So there's multiple levels of protection to uh, prevent you from accidentally, or anyone else from accidentally shutting down your ventilator if you have ventilator operations going on. Now one nice feature is when you turn this ventilator on, it always brings up the last settings of where you were previously ventilating. So that's kind of a nice little feature. Uh, from patient to patient, most of the venting ventilator settings are pretty similar. Um, we can, you can immediately select start ventilation at those settings, or you can do a circuit check Obviously a circuit check is um, recommended 
And very simply, it's just checking to make sure that you don't have any um, leaks. So it's just simply going to pressurize the line, and then it's going to go through a self-system check. So if we go ahead and do circuit check, it's going to ask me to occlude the end. So I just read the directions, occlude the end, and press accept. And now what it's doing is it's pressurizing this and uh, checking for any leaks. Okay. Now it had it passed that, and I just had a little get release of gas. So the next step is going to be open the patient circuit. It's now open, and press accept. And then if you listen, you're going to hear it go through, I believe, like four or five levels of fan speed. So this is just kind of an internal diagnostic to make sure that it's able to run the ventilator at the correct settings. And then it says circuit check passed and accept. So now we're ready to go ahead and uh, it's just telling me to uh, that it has it's not on, it's currently on battery power. Now you notice here that it's got a yellow um, uh, indicator. Okay, and then that is for any non-critical alert. Um, a critical alert is actually going to be red, and it's actually designed so that no matter what direction or side you know side that you're at, you can always see the color. So it's it's kind of a kind of a nice feature. Put my artificial lung on. Here's my alarm silence reset button. So I'm just going to acknowledge that alarm. <clears throat> now, in chain, basic, my basic setup. Um, some interesting things to note. Um, I've got my tidal volume here, VT, uh, and it's currently set at 550 or 0.55. I've got my respiratory rate of 18, flow of 75, my I times 0.4, and I've got a PEEP of 5. Um, it's set right here for my mode, which is AC, and I so simply it's a full touch screen. So if I tap on it, it switches to SIMV or spontaneous, depending on what type of vent setting I'm doing. Uh, one other feature that I really love about this particular device is that if any point you encounter a screen or an option or anything that you're you're not quite sure what it means, like you know if you don't know your way around a ventilator, you should not be ventilating the patient. However. You know your way around the ventilator, but you know you're used to another ventilator that it actually says you know tidal volume, or maybe the tidal volume is in milliliters instead of liters, like this one's showing in liters, and you're not understanding why it's showing as 0.55. Um, down here on the corner of the screen, it's showing a question mark. So you tap question mark and you tap there, and it's going to simply tell you everything. So it's going to tell you the range is 0.05 to. 2.2 liters. So now that makes sense. It's showing it in liters, not milliliters. So instead of you know ventilating at a tidal volume of 450, this would be 0.45. And just hit accept, and that brings you back to your main screen. Anything that you want to change, you just highlight it, and then you've got up and down arrow. So I can move this down to 450. So I can actually press it, you know, tap, 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 or I can press and hold. And then no changes take effect both during ventilation and during setup. It automatically, after about 10 seconds or 5 seconds, it's going to just revert right back to where it was. And that helps too, so in case you were like navigating around, inadvertently changed something, nothing takes effect until you hit accept. So it's already reverted back. If I hit accept, nothing's going to happen. So it's right back at 0.55. So I can tap. 0.55 again, I can bring it down to 450, and in order to actually make the effect, I'm going to hit accept. Now my tidal volume is back at 450, and it correspondingly changed my flow. It was up in the low 70s, now my flow is at 68. So that's kind of nice. Um, if I'm going to change you know, my respiratory rate down to 12, and hit accept. Now if I'm going to change multiple parameters, say my tidal volume is 500, my respiratory rate is 14, and my PEEP is uh, 10, I can actually go here, tidal volume, move it to 500, respiratory rate, move it to 14, PEEP, move it to 10. Now all three have been changed, hit accept, and it takes all three at the same time. So that's a nice aspect too. For my alarms, here's where you can set your high pressure and your low pressure, what's going to be your, your main critical alarms. Um, the other nice thing is it's got alarm quick set. 
Now, that is for a breathing patient. If you don't know what it is, you can just tap question mark, tap alarm quick set. What it's going to do is, say you have a patient who is either conscious or semi-conscious, they're doing some type of uh, ventilation on their own, and they have their own breathing pattern. Um, they're kind of triggering the high pressure or the low pressure a little bit on their own. You can set a safe range, but what alarm pre preset's going to do is, it's going to observe the patient's intrinsic breathing while it's delivering ventilation, so you still got that safety backup, but it's, it's checking for it, the patient's own resistance levels. And then it's gonna go ahead and automatically set your alarms at 20% above and 20% below. And that way, you know, you're not riding down the road and maybe you set the, uh, the high pressure and they just continue to clear their throat or continue to try to cough a little bit. Um, it won't mean that you eliminate all alarms, but it will make it, it's setting it to comfortable levels. So we can clear that, so that's alarm quick set. So you can obviously manually set your alarm, um, your pressures and everything, or how, you know, it's got an apnea alarm, so after 20 seconds, it's gonna alarm you that the patient is no longer breathing. That would be for a mode like spontaneous, um, a high, high respiratory rate alarm. Um, so if, if the patient's overbreathing the vent by a tremendous amount. Um, down here is a nice feature. It's telling you your battery time. So right now it's showing a battery time of nine hours and 30 minutes. This has one battery in it. Well, technically two, but one removable battery. Um, if you come to the back of the device, it's got one battery that we can press and release. This is the removable battery. It sli just slides in. We don't have a backup battery um, for our service. It's simply not uh, worth it. You will know that also the AC power cord that you can take with you hooks into the battery, not the device. So it's impossible to run the device for long term without the battery. Now the battery is supposed to give you about 10 hours of ventilation. Uh, reliably, it's really giving you like five hours. I'm getting an alarm because it has told me that I've removed the battery or it's not connected. The nice thing about this is, um, let me go ahead and reset this real quick. Acknowledge that, go back to my main screen. I'm gonna go ahead and start ventilation. Okay, so right now I'm ventilating my patient. Okay? Okay. And I'm gonna remove my battery. I'm still ventilating. That's because there is an internal battery inside this machine to allow you to do what's called a hot swap. Battery starts going down, you're on transport, you're gonna take this battery out, get a fresh battery, and pop it back in. So there is a backup inside the machine itself. And the nice thing is too, it actually, see my battery indicator right here? Uh, kind of like on your cell phone, it's giving you a certain number of bars, and it really gives a percentage readout. I'll bring it closer for you so you can see. So I've got full bars and says 100%. If I pull the battery out, it switches to red smaller bars and it's telling me it's 100%, but obviously that's gonna drop down faster. Now my ventilation rate is high right now because I've set the peep at 10. <laughs> and right now I've got an air leak in my artificial lung, so it really doesn't like this at all. And when it has multiple um, alarms, it's not going to allow me to go through the... Um, It's not going to allow me to go through the screens unless I've cleared every single alarm. So say you get a low pressure alarm, then you get a high minute volume alarm, then a high pressure alarm. It's going to show them and it's going to alarm and it's going to give you an audible alarm plus a visual alarm. And you can hit accept for the alarm, but you're going to clear the highest priority one first and then you're going to clear the whole stack of them. So you might have seven different alarms that you've got to clear through the screen before it brings you back to the main screen. So that's a nice feature too because while you're uh, say 
working on this with the patient.